Uh, thank you very much for the invitation to talk about our um, project Power Transformed. As uh, Lynn mentioned, this was a collaborative project involving um, many, some of the people in this room, but others across uh, industry representatives, regulators, policymakers, experts, experts not just in the energy field, but from areas such as psychology and behavioural marketing even, um, to, to really help us um, look at uh, how can we support a, a transitioning energy market um, so that it uh, benefits consumers. Um, uh, my centre had done a report a couple of years ago called Smart Moves for a Smart Market, which really looked at some of the technologies that are available and, and coming into the marketplace. Um, and from that project, we realised that the, the market was getting more complex. Different sorts of products, whether they're going to be obviously power purchase agreements, which are often long term, up to 20 years as in length. We're getting battery and solar bundles are now coming in as home energy management services, all long term supply agreements, which were something that was new for customers um, uh, in relation to their energy services. Um, we were also aware that there was very low trust and engagement or tr tr in the energy sector more, more broadly in the, in the incumbent energy sector. So that presents opportunities for these new products and services to overcome that trust, um, uh, that trust deficit. Um, but also we wanted to ensure that uh, sort of the uh, mistrust wasn't embedded as that transition happened. So innovation, of course, can be a, a really good thing, but in some market transitions, innovation can also be a, word, a code word for avoidance or chicanery um, for businesses to get away around existing protections. Um, at my centre, we're a, a legal centre, uh, receive complaints from the public about a range of um, consumer matters. Uh, the, the one area of, of keen concern to us from our, our complaints is the area of solar selling, and particularly solar with finance, where um, uh, they were often as the result of door-to-door um, -door or unsolicited sales um, being sold to people, uh, uh, no interest ever and, and um, no upfront payments in a way that wasn't aligning with what they, those customers uh, um, needed in terms of their energy services. Um, so we thought this project, of, um, by working with a group of people, could help us develop some some principles, but also some actions to help um, uh, regulators and, and policymakers transition uh, uh, the energy market to, to deliver good consumer outcomes. Um, the challenge we identified is is there. Um, uh, tr you know, traditional, I guess, economic theory suggests you don't intervene in markets until there's a market failure. Um, the concern that we had using that framework was, uh, particularly in innovating or transforming markets, um, is that where where there is that sit on your hands. Um, approach until there's evidence of detriment, um, uh, that can mean that uh, bad practices get embedded and it can be very hard to undo um, or, 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 or put in place a regulatory framework later on. So what we're, what we're really asking is what can we do um, to unlock effective competition and trust now um, uh, uh, to facilitate a good market outcome um, rather than being seen to regulate to hold back the market from developing. Um, the report also draws on prior knowledge and experience with respect to changes um, in, in energy markets as well as behavioural research, as I mentioned. Uh, for example, the report stresses uh, uh, the effective, that effective competition, innovation and market efficiency re require consumer participation. But we also know that more information and more complexity can impair consumer decision making. So the examples that we knew at my centre as well were in relation to the smart meter rollout in Victoria, where um, uh, it didn't engage in consumers like it could have, led to high levels of distrust um, in the energy sector. Uh, the benefits of smart meters weren't adequately explained to, to households, um, and indeed most of the benefits appeared to, to flow to industry. And I think a similar thing in relation to some of the efforts around pricing reforms, whereby um, you know there's been a low uptake of flexible offers um, which is perhaps because they're considered complex, uh, uh, despite efforts by regulators to make information available uh, to customers. So that, the key question in dealing with complexity was how, how, can we, how can we enable good consumer outcomes um, in the transforming electricity market and, and also build that trust? We really define good consumer outcomes up front, and that was part of working in the collaborative group was to help articulate what do we mean by good consumer outcomes in the marketplace. Um, and, and we identified five factors. Firstly, uh, ensuring face, f sorry, fair, safe, and reliable products. So that means uh, not, uh, you know, good deals, not getting ripped off, um, uh, the, the products not being unsuitable. Um, providing simple, clear, and consistent information to customers. 
uh, providing easy and equitable access to services, recognising that energy is an essential service, uh, providing free and simple dispute resolution when something goes wrong, and ensuring that efficiency from innovation benefits uh, customers. And I guess another key reflection of this project is that relying on, on the generic law, the Australian consumer law um, alone uh, to, to support um, uh, the complex on transforming market, it's probably not going to be sufficient to protect the consumer interest. Um, and, and this is because, you know, where it's, it's been recognised in other markets where um, products are, are difficult to assess because they're intangible or they're complex um, or the fact they're purchased infrequently, um, uh, where there's a relatively risk of high consumer detriment, um, more will be required. And that's what we were trying to aim about. What, what was that more to help um, uh, build this market? So the, pro the pro project came up with three principles which were designed to build trust um, and they're written there. It should be easy for people to, to engage and make effective decisions. Um, appropriate consumer protections should be applied to all energy services, energy products and services. And the benefits of the transforming energy market should be shared across the whole community. So uh, that's pretty simplistic to put up there, you probably think. Um, but, but really this is um, trying to get, the, you know, the first principle there is trying to get some real human decision making into the way we present data and information to make it easy to find and use for, for you know, everyday people who are trying to assess their options available to them. The second principle is about ensuring there aren't inconsistencies in, in what um, protections apply across the market, depending on the different types of product or service you buy. Um, uh, you know, some technologies within uh, energy market regulations, some when they're bundled with credit fit, fit within other um, credit related protections and, and some fall out of both. The third is really making sure that some people aren't left behind because of factors which make it difficult for them to access um, new products and services. And finally, I guess because the product pro project really couldn't stop at principles, we wanted to come up with some further tangible recommendations um, that could be considered by, by policymakers. Um, really, I guess there's a bit of some no regrets initiatives that could be adopted in the short term. Um, uh, to, to, to kind of preventative early action, if you like, um, to help ensure that the market transforms safely and fairly for consumers and the public. So we came up with five proposals which were um, supported by our reference group. So firstly, testing. Testing the need at for and form of market interventions against real consumer decision making. Um, and, and this really goes to the point that, you know, more information sometimes doesn't always help. We really need to trial things um, and, and be willing to have a go at, at seeing what works and what doesn't. Secondly, it goes to dispute resolution and ensuring we have adequate access to justice when things go wrong and ensuring that our energy ombudsman services, um, are ex their jurisdictions are expanded to have um, uh, be able to consider complaints about all these new products and services. And I know Janine's going to talk about that a bit more in a moment. Um, thirdly, requiring energy services, uh, energy service providers to more clearly ensure products, products are fit for um, consumers' purposes and appropriate to their needs. So there are protections at the moment about ensuring services are fit for purpose in the Australian consumer law, but what we're saying is we, we're putting further obligations or suggestions on, on businesses to identify that upfront with the consumer to make those, those protections work in practice. Um, fourthly, uh, programs to assist vulnerable, vulnerable people access innovation. Um, you know, it might be uh, overcoming default biases or just broadly supporting the more vulnerable groups. And finally, um, similar to, to Lauren's suggestions in her presentation around targeting concessions to address consumer need rather than tying them to specific supply or contractual arrangements. So I'll leave it there. Thank you.